Just when I thought I was out, they pull me back in. I'm going back to the cornfield today. If you didn't know, I just did a video where I ranked and talked about all 10 of the Children of the Corn films. And now Children of the Corn, a new remake is heading to cinemas across America. The blurb for this one is that the film describes the events leading up to and including the massacre of adults in a small town in Nebraska by their children after adults irresponsibly ruin the crop and the children's future. So although this is a remake, it seems more like a prequel. It's covering different events in the films because the original Children of the Corn, I've said that name so many times. I'm gonna call it corn from now on. In the original corn, uh, it starts with a narration and the kids doing, carrying out the massacre. Um, so it's really interesting that this is leading up and it looks like they have a motive to why they do what they do. Not that they don't have a motive in the original one, but it was very religious based. So this should be interesting. I also believe that this film may not have Isaac and Malachi, which really bums me out. Uh, that's, I love watching them and I'm really sad that they don't appear in more of the franchise. So I'm really interested to see this angle on the events. Obviously this is based on the short story by Stephen King. So it'll be interesting to see if it does have the old main characters, Bert and Vicky, who were in the original film and then also the first remake. This is the second remake for Children of the Corn. Can, can they do it? Let's find out. Also, I just want to mention, it's a little bit confusing when looking for this film online because although it was made, it was shot in Australia um, and finished in 2020, it hasn't been released until this year, 2023. So it gets a little bit confusing what remake is what, but this is the new one. <laughs> This is the poster if you need a reference. And this is out in limited cinemas across the US. I've been lucky enough to get myself a copy to watch at home and it will be out available to stream this month as well, which is really exciting later this month. So I'm gonna let you know whether it's worth your time and worth checking out. Should you wait to stream it or should you go see it at the cinemas? Let's go and find out. Let's watch Children of the Corn for the last time this year. Let's go. What? Malachi, come jump up. Good boy, Malachi. His name's Malachi now. <laughs> I've lost it. Let's go to the cornfields back for Children of the Corn 2020. Fingers crossed. Corn's crossed. <laughs> well, I've seen some Children of the Corn films in my time. <laughs> in fact, I've seen all 10, now 11. And I can tell ya, I mean, it kind of fits the bill, to be honest. But it's time to retire the hat. Game over. We've corn too close to the field. This film does the one thing that no other film in the franchise has done. It takes religion out of the cult. They are the children of the corn, but it's not a cult. That's my favorite part. By the way, I did eat this entire thing. So, so if I have corn in my teeth, I what I didn't intend to, but it, it just I just went for it, and it just happened while I was watching. Anyway, this film was a patchwork, like a quilt, of all the different aspects I dislike in movies in general, especially in particular horror movies. It has a very strange start that I didn't realize <laughs> what it was trying to do until much later. But basically we follow the character Eden who is the antagonist in this one. And she's adopted and taken to the town of Ralstone. I think that's how I say it, um, in Nebraska. And from there, the, <laughs> the adults in this film are insane, like insanity. And they really want you to feel like the adults are the bad guys. And it's just the way they interact with the children, which is just so unbelievable, like just actually unbelievable. Um, but yeah, she goes into this town and it just so happens that the she gets adopted by a preacher and he basically says one line that is religious in the whole film. Um, and they do refer to the adults as sinners, but there is no religion going on. It's also in modern day. Sorry, I should have brought that. I didn't watch the trailer at all. And so the modern day setting really threw me. I didn't realize that we were gonna do that, but it makes sense because every Children of the Corn is in that year of making. That's the time it's meant to be set around. It's not like they go back to the 80s for any reason. So Eden goes into this town and um, all of the kids are struggling with their parents 
And for some reason, it's got to do with the way that their parents have treated the cornfield. And the parents have collectively decided that they're not going to make they're not going to do corn anymore it's not going to be a corn town anymore and the children are very upset about this chaos ensues it is like the events leading up and after the massacre um but it's just different in every sense in every sense the film also plays out just like a drama it feels like a strange drama that you've kind of got the chunk of the middle there is a lead into the characters, but they're not really charismatic that it feels like an arc or anything really interesting going on with them. You're just kind of like, oh yeah, they're brother and sister, you know, <laughs> like as you're watching. Eden, I kind of have a soft spot for this actress who plays her. She was in Our House and she was also in The Handmaid's Tale. I don't really remember her in The Handmaid's Tale, um, but I, there's just something about her that is like magnetic. And even though all of her lines were very cringe and trying to really understand her perspective was very strange. I haven't got into the half of it, but um, I really liked her. It's, it's very strange. I just have something about, I think she's got so much confidence and she plays creepy kid very well, even though they've kind of removed the creepy kid element from the film. This is a, such a far cry from the original film and all the original story and what it's about. It's meant to be about, uh, you know, parental fears of children, believe it or not, and also religion and a metaphor for religion and uh, what we do to others. And this film flips that on the head and takes away the creepy children. And there's like an uprising, which makes no sense because they're like uprising against like these bulky you know, these big dudes. I just don't understand. They don't show you how any of it actually happened. There just seems to be more kids than adults in this town. Yeah, it's bizarre. But yeah, Eden, I thought for some reason, I just, I still enjoyed her, even though it was like a little bit much. It kind of reminded me of Children of the Corn 3 uh, with Eli. Like I just like Eli, even though that film isn't great. I mean, it's a little bit better than this one, let's be real. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I still liked her. I still had a soft spot for her. But the film starts off as being some kind of dramatic idea of these kids being wronged by the parents and somehow it it just makes no sense like every single family is having issues marital issues and it's all got to do with the corn <laughs> but they don't really explain that and then you think oh maybe it's not a wealthy town and the corn suffering and dying or whatever's happening to the corn um <laughs> the issues uh, rubbed off on um, the parents and the, you know, the economical state of this town. But no, their houses are pristine. These houses look like Pottery Barn. It does not look like the rural, I was going to say outback, but I mean, it is filmed in the outback, but it's not filmed in the, it doesn't seem like a rural setting. It seems very suburban, very well off. The main character, Bo, her house is pristine. It's decorated. They have like decor items. Like, you know what I mean? It's not just like a horseshoe. <laughs> like it's actually interior designed. Not, I mean, yeah, to your, whatever, to your likings. But I just, it just didn't feel like it was a town struggling to me. Um, and it's just this weird dramatic reading. And um, yeah, I don't know. I just didn't believe anything that anyone said. And the way that these adults talk to these children in this film is absolutely bizarre. The children are very upset about the situation with the corn. Number one, I don't think kids, you know, five to 15 years old would have any qualms about the corn in their town. Sure, they might think it's like a big part of their, I don't know, their life, their livelihood, their memories, but these are kids. Like, I don't understand how they think that they're gonna have so much authority or really question the adults that much. It's just a strange motive, to be fair. And then the adults, they like belittle the kids. They're like, oh, what are you gonna do? Go home and play with your toys? That's what one guy said to a kid. Yeah, that's exactly what they're gonna do. They're, they're children. <laughs> It's just, it was really bizarre how they tried to play the adults versus kids and just all of the strange, I don't know, the strange way that they flipped the power um, and didn't explain it. So that's half of the film. And then the other half of the film is this bizarre creature feature <laughs> CGI. And I'm not going to ruin it. This is spoiler free. I'm not going to ruin what the creature looks like. The CGI is over the top. It is laughable it is it is bizarre I'm like what are they trying to say I mean there is kind of a reasoning towards this film which is gonna 
anything that it had left, it's going to lose that part of the audience because it's kind of like they greenwashed <laughs> Children of the Corn. They make it seem like it's this political statement about um, the environment and how these adults have come here and ruined the environment. So the children are really upset about that and their livelihood. But when the CGI action comes in, it seems like there is another motive for our antagonist. And there's ju it's just a mess. It is a big mess. And one thing it has is some bloody kills, but unfortunately the rest is, is just, I don't, yeah. <laughs> ba -bow. I'm very sad about it. I was hoping. I, the thing is, there's some cool scenes where um, the, Bo, the lead, she's running through the cornfields at night. And I feel like less is more when it comes to creature feature aspects. And if they had removed the creature and just had some of those running scenes, I think it would work really well. And because they removed the cult aspect and the creepy kid aspect, which are the two things I love the most, they didn't have any visions either, which Children of the Corn films usually have visions. Since they removed all that, they could have made it a scary movie to do with that cornfield at night. And if you wanna make a movie loosely based on the Children of the Corn, why not make you know some people driving past, get stuck there, and they're just stuck there all night in the cornfield or something like that? Like. They didn't have to go all the way out and make this elaborate story for no payoff. Um, I just felt like it was so far removed from anything. Unfortunately, the track record of Children of the Corn is is just that. Like, it is far removed. All of the films are very far removed from each other and from the core value of the first one. Um, and this one, it, it falls straight in line with the rest. I don't know where I would put this in my ranking, but not high. Pretty, like, I'd say, like, probably the bottom two or three. Um, yeah. I'm really bummed. <laughs> uh, I've gone a long way with Children of the Corn and one day I really hope that they'll um, rectify this and we'll get a good Children of the Corn film. One day. It's cults. It's children. It's, <laughs> it's like m this religious nightmare um, and somehow we just can't get it right. In terms of stylization, we've talked about the CGI. Um, it, it looks fine. It's not a bad looking film. The one thing that really was apparent to me was the use of music. And that's what makes it feel like such a drama aspect at the start. It feels like 90% drama and then like 10% horror at the end. And it also feels like the middle, like a trilogy. And it's like the film in the middle because it's just so like you have to get into the characters so quick and you don't really connect to any of them and then it's kind of like going through this I don't know it's just it feels like you've just kind of been thrown into this story and it doesn't give you any soft padding to fall on um but also the music the music was just really dramatic and over the top and I was hoping that they might even use the original score because I love when they do that in Children of the Corn and they did that in the first remake um, that would have been really cool, but alas, they did not. I'm gonna leave it up to you to decide where you fall, but I probably wouldn't recommend seeking this one out. Um, you definitely don't have to re-watch any of them to watch this one. It's kind of a standalone film, but it is, in saying that, it's a complete standalone film. As in, this is not a Children of the Corn film. This is just some children in some corn. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's the children and the corn, not the children of the corn. You know? I gotta give this one a personal score of... 3 out of 10, uh, originality, 2 out of 10, scare, there was some gore, but yeah, now like 4 out of 10. It's not scary, it's like there are some gory aspects, some blood, but it was, yeah, far and few between, and very much towards the end half, or even the end quarter of the film. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this one more than I did. Um, Children in the Corn it will be out soon streaming, but right now it's out in cinemas across America. If you check it out, let me know what your personal score is down below. And I hope you're having a fantastic day. Stay safe and stay out of that corn and stay spooky. Bye, friends. <laughs>